This is part 9 of rebuilding a large Clarkson single cylinder vertical steam engine and part 9 is repairing the crankshaft and painting the flywheel. You will be pleased to know that the painting of the flywheel is really the end of the painting. <laughs> Apart from painting around the cylinder and the centre of the steam chest. Having a quick look at this crankshaft it looks very well made. The flywheels turn nicely. I don't much like the way that the crankshaft itself is recessed in the middle of the crank web. It's better to have it protruding slightly. And thankfully on this crankshaft assembly there's not much rust to remove. Some of them that I work on, as you've probably seen before, are incredibly rusty. I spend many hours with files, sandpaper and Scotch-Brite to clean them up, but this is going to clean up very easily. During manufacture I'm very pleased to see that someone has spent a lot of time cleaning up the eccentric sheaves. Again, a lot of the time with the engines I work on, the eccentric sheaves are quite rough, just sort of filed. Where possible, I like to clean them up a bit more than this, and sometimes I polish them to make the engine look really pretty. The eccentric sheaves are an attraction to the eye, because of the way they rotate, so it's a good idea to take a bit of extra time and make these look good. The first part of this section of the job is to remove the flywheel. This is held to the crankshaft with two Allen grub screws, and these come out quite easily, and the crankshaft slides out of the flywheel beautifully. And looking at the parts, they all fit together very well. The hole in the flywheel is a perfect fit on this crankshaft, and this packing washer is also a perfect fit. Can it be that I'm going to be in luck with this engine, and the parts are actually going to fit together without rattling? Well, at this moment, I'm living in hopes, because it will make a change. First of all, though, I think I'll take this opportunity to clean up all the parts with my T-shirt, not my underpants, this is a t-shirt. My underpants do not have logos on them like this. Here we go, let's remove these lock nuts and get down to business removing the eccentric sheaves. And they're coming out very well. I'm going to speed up this part of the video. I'm not going to play any music because you really would go to sleep then. I have the eccentric sheaves in pieces. I'm temporarily bolting them back together once they're removed, so I know which is which. I think I spoke too soon on the crankshaft being good. If you look at this you will see that the crankshaft is loose in the crank web, or the other way around. And with a bit of manipulation and slackening off the grub screw at the back, which was the only thing holding this, it came away. And it gets worse. Once I remove the crank web, I notice something odd. Huh, it's been sleeved. So it looks like the crank web was bored too big in the first place to fit onto the crankshaft. So the builder sleeved the crank web. You can see it here if you look carefully. You can see the line. And that's the sleeve. I don't really mind this, it's quite well done. I didn't like the bit sticking out at the back so I removed that. Then I carried on cleaning up the parts. These are the eccentrics and they fit on the crankshaft beautifully like the flywheel does. So here's the fix. I decided to use the original crank web on the original crankshaft. All I did was push the crankshaft through the crank web a little bit. I checked this by putting the crankshaft into the engine itself which showed me that the length of the crankshaft at this point is not critical. So I use the bluntest knife in the world that I have kicking about on the bench for jobs like this to scribe around the crankshaft and it was a simple job to put it in the lathe and face it off to the new length. You can see the scribed line here and it's not much metal that I'm going to remove. After I removed the metal I drilled the end using a centre drill. This is purely cosmetic and gives the effect of the part being turned between centres. Then it was time to fit the parts together using a generous amount of Loctite 638. I've found from experience that with these Loctite products they work incredibly well provided that you are careful. If you're fitting an axle to a model railway engine wheel or you're fitting a crankshaft to a model steam engine crank web you must make sure that you have plenty of the material on the actual shaft that's going into the hole and that the shaft is not too big. If the shaft is a very tight fit in the hole in the wheel or crank web it will push all of the Loctite out of the way and you will not have a tight bond. This is actually what happened on this. I noticed that when I removed the crankshaft, there was evidence of a very fine line of Loctite, but only around the part where the crankshaft met the crank web, not all the way through. And that's why it failed. The grub screw is only there as a token. As you can see, the crankshaft is in place in the crank web, and I always leave a little bit protruding because I like the look of it, and I see it frequently on full size steam engines and locomotives. Time now to clean the surface rust off the flywheel. There isn't much. I'm just going to use a piece of Scotch-Brite. Be very, very careful. I have to put a health warning in here. 
and it's nothing about wearing all over rubber suits. Really be very, very careful when you're doing this job. Make sure that you know where all nine of your fingers are at all times. Do not put too much pressure on the part and never work from the inside edge. This clip shows me reversing the flywheel in the chuck so I can continue to work on the outside edge. You're asking for trouble if you work on the inside edge because the chuck, along with the work, could grab the scotch bright and pull your finger in there. For once this is a serious health and safety warning, be very very careful when doing this, you need to keep all of your fingers. So you can do this, paint the flywheel. This really is the last bit of major painting, and it's not that major, it's only a small flywheel. I'm using the NER green, the same as I did on the main stanchion, and it's getting a bit thick and glue because I'm getting to the bottom of the tin. So with the flywheel in the general paint drying area, you notice that I put the crankshaft in the flywheel to hold it vertically. You will also notice the cylinder clad in mahogany. That's the next episode. Thanks for watching and I hope you found it useful.